in my shop. I was a young fellow, an apprentice, and I was surrounded by young fellows, and they were all in love, and so they kept singing their love songs. Fellows sitting alongside of me would sing, I care not for the stars that shine. I dare not hope to air be thine. I only know I love you, love me, and the world is mine. So after a while, he invited me to his wedding. I came to his wedding, was in the old apostolic church, and he stood there and she stood there for about a half an hour. I felt sorry for both of them. And I worked with him for many years, and just last year he asked me to come and see him. He's an old man now. His wife has died quite a while ago, and he missed her so much. And he didn't have any love song to sing anymore. It was all gone, something like Byron says, My life is in the yellow leaf. The joys and mirth of youth are gone. The worm, the canker, and the grief are mine alone. I felt sorry for him. And he said, well, if I die, I hope it'll happen quickly. And it happened so quickly, it shocked me. He's dead now. But while they sang their love songs, I sang mine. They didn't like it at that time. They said, every time we meet you, you're singing. I would sing, I have a friend so precious, so very dear to me. He loves me with such tender love. He loves me faithfully. And I'd sing sweeter as the years go by. I kept singing all the time. And the wonder of it is, my life is not in the yellow leaf now. It's just beginning to be lived. And my love affair with Jesus Christ has grown warmer and happier and more brilliant and more marvelous ever since. Thank God. Oh, this lover of mine and this lovership of mine is something so very real. And when I think that it's not only going to last forever and forever, but it'll become sweeter all the time. We see that in those who have really loved God. Abraham became a friend of God. The closer he walked with God, the more he thought of God, until he was willing to give up his own son just for the friendship of Jehovah. And Almighty God bestowed everything upon him. And he said, never mind, Abraham. When Abraham's naughty nephew walked off with the best inheritance and Abraham was willing to give it up. God said, don't you mind. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And there came a time in my young life when God asked me to give up everything. The dearest I had in this world, everything. It was absolutely no, no cost. I didn't have to count the cost at all. By that time, Jesus had become so very real, so very precious, so very wonderful to me. He just possessed me wholly. And I said, live or die, if I had a thousand hearts to give, Lord, they should all be thine. How did it come about? Why, by getting acquainted with Jesus. You won't really love him until you know him. But oh, how you love him when you know him. And this is life eternal is to know him because to know Jesus is different from knowing a human being. You know your life. And as you get to know him, you find out that he is really your all and in all. He is God's righteousness and holiness and redemption. He is all you need. Thank God. He gives you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness. He gives you himself for yourself. And that's why it says, if you love your own life, you'll perish. You cannot be my disciple. It's by making that exchange. And you don't make that exchange until you really become acquainted with Jesus. And that's why our motto in this church has been and is today, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desire of your heart. Mind you, delight thyself 
Church Degen says, Jedes Herz will etwas lieben. Liebt nicht Jesus, kann es nicht ruhen. Every heart has to have something to love. And if your heart doesn't love Jesus, you'll never get into rest. And so I find it a delightful job to delight myself also in the Lord. But you can't delight yourself in somebody you don't know. That's why the Holy Ghost is given. And that's why I say, true Pentecost is a lovership. It isn't speaking with tongues. It's not having signs and wonders performed. It's not making a lot of noise or anything of that nature. But it's this intimate intimacy, this intimacy with Jesus that leads you by and by to identification with him. For he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And oh, why is it that people run hither and thither every place instead of running into this fountain of living water? My people have committed a twofold evil. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living water. I have this against you because you've left your first love. And oh, how sad is that case. But God, in his great mercy, has launched a Pentecostal movement. I enjoyed a track by Mrs. Flower. Seven years of heaven on earth. She describes the first seven years of her Pentecostal experience. It was lovership with Jesus. It was intimacy with the Son of God. Oh, he tell, I tell him all my sorrows. I tell him all my joys. He tells me all that I need to know. I tell him all that pleases me and tell him what to know. Beloved, these things are so exceedingly and so wonderfully real and if they're not real, we lose everything. You've left your first love. Your candlestick is removed from its place. Unless Jesus Christ is the joy of your heart, is your only interest, your only joy, Jesus, you're almost bound to get into fanaticism today. Everywhere they're ringing the bells. Everywhere they're putting on a show. I met a man who is dragged around with one of the great divine healers, he says. Every, every few months we've got something new. First, it was oil dripping from the tip of your fingers. And then it was picking up sawdust from the floor of the tent. And uh, then it was something else. And now it's getting into the shadow of the evangelist. And if they don't put on a circus, they haven't got a revival. If they don't put on a banquet, they don't have a revival. We used to sing, hold the fort for I am coming. Now we sing, hold the forks, the knives are coming. Spoons are on the way. Slam the dishes to the table, pass the hash this way. Wonderful revival. Everybody speaks in tongues. For goodness sake, what are you looking for? Jesus Christ is looking for hearts. He's looking for bodies whom he can fill with the power of his resurrection, whom he can get ready for that wonderful rapture. Oh, what teachings there are in the world today about the coming of the Lord. And what we really need is to know that the only preparation is Jesus, is knowing him and the power of his resurrection. And the power of his resurrection belongs into this body, into this heart of mine. And that's why he says, I stand at the door and knock. You say you're rich and increased with goods. Everywhere people are vying with one another to make people know that they're a little more spiritual than others. They got more success than somebody else. Their church is better than theirs. Got a higher tower. And it's more modern, modern architecture. Fine rope choirs and whatnot. But oh, when Jesus becomes my all and in all, when I glory in the Lord, <laughs> hallelujah. They say, what is your beloved more than another beloved? Don't we have our sweethearts too? And you make such a fuss over your sweetheart. What is he more? Never mind. You don't know him. You don't know him. He stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. 
Oh, when your heart longs for him. The Bible says he comes to those who look out for him. And that's what Pentecost meant to do. To make Jesus Christ not only real to his people, to, but to make him head over all things to the church. Head. Master. Oh, how different it is when you belong to this organism instead of an organization that chokes the life out of you. I don't say nothing against organism any more than I would complain about a cripple having crutches. He needs them. But get him healed and he'll throw those crutches away. But when you're baptized into this organism, beloved, we don't discern the body of Christ, else we would be united to the head and united to one another, and we would bless one another, and the glory of God would flow from us into others. And that's Pentecost. It's Christ manifested in his church, in his own. And the Holy Spirit has come to this world, not to make men big, but to make Jesus big. <laughs> to make him dear, to make him sweet, to make you get a taste of this lovership that is the only lovership worth having. The only real intimacy with the Son of God. Oh, delight thyself also in the Lord. We said yesterday morning, we ought to pray to love Jesus more than we do. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be cursed, Paul says. Beloved, it's that lovership of Jesus that... Puts me on the right track. Because if any man love me, he will keep my words. And the words that I speak unto you are spirit and they're life. You will eat his flesh and drink his blood. And the Holy Spirit will come and make it life. Spirit and life. And I tell you a lot of stuff today in the world that is called spirituality is fanaticism, is wrong, is dead. We've had people that act like top-notch saints, but inwardly full of corruption, full of the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. I came to one of the large conventions on the West Coast. Mr. Turnbull brought me there. And I got there just in time to make a talk. The convention had been going on and they had had their election. And they had had their politic, politicking. And everybody wanted to be number one, A number one. Nobody wanted to be B number two. <laughs> and so now they were elected and they all had their buttons. They were all sitting on the platform. I didn't know them from Adam. And somebody said on the way, what are you going to preach about? I said, I don't know. I got to get the smell of the place first. And as I got on the platform, God gave me a text from Psalm 133. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. There God commands his blessing. And it was a short talk. And after the talk, uh, one of the ministers came to me and said, Say, you sure knocked the ornaments off their Christmas tree. I heard them grunting behind me. The word of God just doesn't fit into these places. It just doesn't fit. It'll explode them. I know what I'm talking about. I've been in these organizations all my life, now 75 years. I've seen how it's choked the life out of God's people. And why is it? We need them. We need crutches. We do. Because we don't want to have fellowship with him. We don't seek just one thing. Oh, my God, when I seek him, the Lamb of God, he will lead me to Calvary, first of all. Oh, to be crucified with Christ. There's the union. There's the deep intimacy with the Son of God. That's where we become one with him. And we'll never be one with him any other way. Know ye not that you were crucified with Christ? Dead with Christ, thank God. Oh, the wonderful way. I am the way and the truth and the life. And now you're gone. 
You don't think of yourself anymore. You don't look at yourself anymore. You don't want to be photographed anymore and, and send your photograph all over the world. When I was in Vienna, one of the great artists in Vienna wanted to paint a picture of me. I said, nothing doing. I'd like to give you a picture of Jesus. And you're not going to paint a picture of me until I'm transformed into his image. <laughs> oh, these ugly pictures of ours. This ugliness. Thank God. Deny yourself. You're dead. Christ lives. And even in this mortal body, this body of mine, which is called the body of my humiliation, the Spirit of God fills it and works it within and prepares this body for that wonderful transformation. And God has wrought us for the self-same thing. God, who has also given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, and now He is the one. And He tells us how to live. He's not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. We need that message today. The whole world is, and the church is sold to the demons of hell, demons of uncleanness, of lust. And you can be a, a top churchman and still live like the world. But you know, God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. And he that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who is also given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Beloved, God is my salvation, thank God. He says you don't have to reach up and take him out of heaven or reach down and bring him out of the grave. He's within you. He's in your heart. He's in your mouth. He's in your body. Oh, Jesus, make me love you more. Make me know you better today. Make me love you more until my whole delight is in the Lord. <laughs> You won't like for a testimony. When we call for testimony. Unless you've had a kink in the back and were healed, you have no testimony. But when you love Jesus Christ, you're like the bride. What, what is your beloved more than another beloved? Oh, I tell you, there's none like him. None like him. Glory to God. He's all 